Yo yeah, guys, it's Ryan here uh, back once again to do the trans track from scratch. Last time we did some percussion, did some bass. This time we're going to be looking at acids. We're going to be looking for a driving acid as well as a bit of a top floaty acid. So uh, let's get tracking. As usual, I've uh, opened the, the project and realized that there's a few things I needed to change. So looking from last video, uh, I needed to increase the volume of the sub quite a bit. And also I had to bring out some 200 hertz of the sub a bit because it wasn't cutting through very well. I've added a bit more whip to the percussion, so I've added some panning to the different loops here. Just to give, make it slightly wider. I've dropped the clap volume down a little bit. I've also added a little bit more wear on the reverb. And lastly, I added some saturate, more saturation uh, to the mid bass, basically bringing up some of the highs here and some of the mids, okay? So, this is what it sounds like. You get the idea. Percussion's probably touched loud, but, you know, we'll get back to that another time. Okay, so we're going to be making an acid. Let's try and make the driving one first. So, I always generally like to make a loop, like a ball loop. First of all, with the acid, maybe a melody, and then I'll do the arranging. So let's have a look at that acid. Just going to make it a, a one finger hold one type of acid, so just one. I'm going to put in an op. Going to use Spire. Make sure you give it on the bus, so I'm going to put it on for 24 here. Let's make a driving one. Probably going to be a bit of a time lapse here, but we'll see. Right, finished the acid, I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's have a little listen to see what it sounds like in the mix. Simple, and I've made this one completely from scratch. Took it a bit longer because I'm not used to doing them recently, I haven't been doing as many acids as recent. So that's what it sounds like, let's have a look. So the first oscillator is just a normal saw wave. Uh, one uh, octave down. Looking at the voices, I've got four voices here. I've added a bit of detune here as a density and detune, if you want to have a look at this. I've made them slightly wider. The envelope, normal full sustain here, nothing else. A tiny bit of attack and uh, release to prevent the clicks. Looking at the filter, I've got the acid filter here. I've got obviously quite a high amount of resonance because that's what gets the acid sound. I've probably got about half 11 here on the cutoff. Now down here, modulating that um, cutoff. I've added a tiny bit of cut off one here on the amplitude and a quite a load of decay here for the distortion. Got a hard mode here on the shaper, a nearly full drive, half of the low cut and nearly three quarter of the high cut and half dry wet signal. So basically the, the distortion is only happening to this small section in between the low cut here and the high cut because that's where I'm after that distortion to happen. I don't want it in the low end because I want me sub and me bass to kiss it there. On the EQ, I've taken a little bit off the low and a little bit off the high so there's no, it's not as harsh. To make it a bit more interesting, I've added two LFOs. An LFO is just modulating the parameter in the synth. I've set it to modulate the cut off, yeah? So the cut is going to go up and down uh, depending on how quick I did it. I've got it 8 over 1 here, so it's going to take quite a long time for this pattern of the sine wave to happen on the cutoff. And then on the other hand, I've used a tiny bit amount of cutoff one being affected by this, this completely random wave, and it's a lot quicker. So it's gonna sound like it's moving quite a bit. It's gonna sound like it's moving a lot quicker, but not a lot whilst it's, there's a bit over here where it's gonna be a lot more, but it's gonna be slower, if that makes sense. This is what it sounds like on its own. For the meantime, I have just got Fab Filter Q. Ooh. I'm going to take the bottom off as well. That's all I want. I might want to um, add some effects later on. It's just assigned to Acid 1 here, which goes to the Acid Bus, which then goes back to the Wall Stop. So I'm going to do another Acid, probably a bit more top endy. Let's have a go at that one.
Right, after that massive time lapse, uh, this is what I've came up with. I've used a base preset, I think from Darren Porter's first uh, Spire Bank. Yeah, I think so. It's just a sequence, but it's, it was, I think it was intended for a baseline, but I've changed it around to make an acid. So what I've done is basically uh, increase the cutoff, increase the resonance, uh, lowered the cutoff modulation here, and had a little mess about with uh, the shape of it. But this, is what it this is what it sounds like. Now the issue with this, it was super, super wide. So on the delay here, the, the, it was too wide for my like, and I preferred a bit thinner. So I, I lowered the, the whip of the delay a touch. Uh, with the two acids, they sound like this. I have processed in the both, so we'll be looking at that in a sec as well. So what I've done on the, the processing, both acids go to the acid bus here. I've got another spare one if I want to use it. What I've added is some compression, just to level it out a bit so it's a bit more uniform. There's no peak. So I've just lowered the threshold here. It's, it's a very basic one. I just lowered the threshold just so it's catching enough peaks to drop them down. Quick listen. Just the peaks. I've added some uh, mag EQ, so it, it, it says it's an EQ, but it sounds like it saturates, it colours the sound a bit, which is what I'm after here. So just adding a little bit of a uh, high end on the 2.5 kilohertz, which is the touch. You could probably do this, honestly, in an EQ uh, if you fiddled around enough of it. Some reverb, and what I've done is I've taken a lot of the bottom round out, because again, later on, that'll be a nightmare when I'm mixing, so let's have a listen. Don't want that bass. Now I've been very careful not to have a crazy slope here because as soon as you have it like a really steep slope it just destroys the sound. My advice is to try and be very careful on the slope on a lot of sounds and then well the fundamental frequencies of the synths will show up near the bottom and you can uh, take them out so if you look. So I've reduced these bits here but I've been very gentle here because I want to keep this. Last of all I've just got a little LFO tool. I've done some very basic uh, EQing on the individual ones, just take top off, take the bottom off. Okay, so in the mix, it sounds like this. Also increase the sub, make the sub a bit louder. There you go guys, very quick acids to chuck in your mix. Honestly, it's, it's really not that hard. It's all about understanding what sounds need to be where. Understanding, is it too wide? Is it too narrow? Is it interfering with the other bass line? In this, uh, it was fine. I was just uh, adjust the levels on the volume and the EQ, and it was completely fine. Next time I'll be adding some atmosphere to the loop. I do it backwards. A lot of people now will chuck in a melody, but next time I'm going to be using some atmospheres to get that feeling of the track a bit better. Okay, so hopefully guys, you learned something new today. Uh, see you next week. Bye.